This video will walk you through the disassembly and reassembly of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. Before you begin, ensure that your work surface is covered with an ESD-safe, non-marring material like this anti-static mat. Check that the surface is clean and clear of any debris or abrasive particles. Equip an anti-static wrist strap. Ensure that your work area is properly grounded and safe. And lastly, make sure that you're wearing protective eyewear as a safety precaution. Warning. If the device you're working on has any of the following symptoms, immediately discontinue the repair and deliver the device to your variance manager or IT support professional for notification to Microsoft RRT. Evidence of heat damage such as burned, melted, or charred components. A case that is bulging or is open for any reason other than user abuse such as dropping or tampering. A leaking, swollen, or otherwise deformed battery or any accessory included with the device that exhibits any of these symptoms. If you're replacing the debucket with battery, use a USB thumb drive with Surface Diagnostic Toolkit to run the SDT battery tests. If the tests show any of the following symptoms, replace the debucket and battery assembly. PF, permanent fail or non-functional status, wear value of 70% or less, cycle count greater than 1000, or delta voltage at or above 100 MV with 50% or greater charge. If you're replacing the AB cover display module, make sure to note the original serial number found on the original display module and provide it to the customer after completion of the repair. If a faulty AB cover is being removed, set the device to TDM replacement mode using your USB drive with Surface Diagnostic Toolkit. To begin disassembly, place your device on your work surface with the bottom side facing up. Use a plastic tool to pry up the bottom foot starting near one of the ends. Once it lifts up, use your fingers to peel the foot off the bottom of the case. Repeat this process on the other foot. To remove the debucket and battery, begin by pulling up the cosmetic plate glued to the debucket. The cosmetic plate is a once-used cosmetic piece that should be discarded once removed. Use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the 9 screws securing the debucket. Lift the lower edge of the debucket and hinge the debucket along the top edge of the device while being careful not to strain the battery cable, then place the debucket flat on the table. Before you disconnect the battery, it's necessary to remove the RSSD. Use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two screws from the RSSD bracket. Pull the RSSD straight out of its socket and place it in an ESD safe location. If your device has the 2030 RSSD model with the bracket, use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the single screw securing it to the bracket and then lift the RSSD up and out of its bracket. Keep in mind, you only need to remove the RSSD from the bracket if you're replacing the RSSD. Pull vertically on the battery cable until the snaps on both sides of the connector are released, and then use the pull tab to slide the connector towards the battery and up to fully disconnect the cable. Lift the debucket up and away and place it in an ESD safe location where it cannot be accidentally contacted or damaged. Use a 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the three screws securing the left I.O. bracket to the C cover and lift it out. Once again, use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two screws securing the Surfalink FPC retainer and lift it out. Use the point of your spudger to disconnect the Surfalink's FPC from the primary circuit board assembly. Use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two screws securing the Surfalink port to the C cover and then lift the Surfalink port up and out. Using the flat edge of your spudger, flip the lock on the audio jack SIF connector and then use a pair of tweezers to pull the audio jack cable out of its connector on the PCBA. Use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the two screws securing the audio jack to the C cover and then use your tweezers to lift the audio jack up from the C cover. There are two screws securing each of the two cable tensioners. Use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove them and then use the pointed end of your spudger to lift the edge of the right cable tensioner free from its screw post. Slide the cable tensioner out, and then repeat this process for the left cable tensioner. Using a plastic opening tool, unlatch the display cable connectors, and then pull the cables horizontally to disconnect them from the motherboard.
loosen the eight hinge screws with your 6IP Torx Plus driver, and then open the device about 90 degrees so that the seat cover is balanced vertically. Remove the screws from the left hinge, and then apply a one inch light duty spring clamp to hold it in place against the seat cover. Remove the hinge screws on the right side, and then while holding the seat cover with one hand, remove the clip, and then carefully lift the seat cover from the display. To get the motherboard out, we need to disconnect some cables, starting with the two left and two right speaker cables. Next, disconnect the left and right fan cables, the trackpad, keyboard, and keyboard backlight cables, and finally, the wireless pin charging cable. Next, use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the three screws securing the right I.O. bracket, and then lift it out. With the bracket out, we can remove the four screws securing the USB-C connectors. Use your tweezers to remove the four black tapes securing the fan cables. Then, using your 3IP Torx Plus driver, remove the six screws securing the left and right speakers. Lift the speakers up and out. There are a total of 14 screws securing the PCBA and the thermal module. Remove those and then carefully lift the left side of the motherboard out of the C cover. Make sure to avoid bending the fin pack of the thermal module while you lift the motherboard up and to the left to remove it. Flip the PCBA over on your ESD safe workbench and then use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove the three screws securing the USB C connectors FPC retainer. Remove the retainer, and then with the pointed end of your spudger, lift straight up to disconnect the USB-C FPC connector. With your 3IP Torx Plus driver, remove the two screws securing the fans, and then lift them up and out of the C cover. Using some tweezers, remove the foam grommets from underneath the fan and save them for reuse. There are four screws securing the left and right tweeters. Use your 3IP Torx Plus driver to remove them, and then lift the tweeters out of the seat cover. To begin reassembly, reinsert the left and right tweeters, and secure them to the seat cover using new 3IP Torx Plus screws. Reinstall the fan post grommets, and place the left and right fans back into the seat cover, securing them with new screws. Align the USB-C ports with their connectors on the motherboard and press them into place. Reinstall the FPC retainer and secure it in place with new screws. Lower the right side of the motherboard into the seat cover ensuring the USB-C ports are properly aligned, and then lower the left side of the board into place in the seat cover. Verify that no cables are captured underneath the motherboard and then align the thermal module over the posts in the seat cover. Reinstall 14 new 3IP Torx Plus screws to secure the PCBA and thermal module. Align and reinstall the left and right speakers, securing them with new 3IP Torx Plus screws. Install four new screws to secure the USB-C connectors to the C-cover, and then place the right I.O. bracket into place and secure it with three new 3IP Torx Plus screws. Reconnect all cables to the motherboard, and then install new fan tape and replace the display cable foam. Place your display on the work surface with the hinges pointed at a 90 degree angle, and then lower your seat cover into place, securing it with a light duty spring clamp on the left hinge. Install new screws on the right hinge, and then remove the clamp to install new screws on the left hinge. Close the device and then loosen all eight hinge screws. Adjust the alignment until the back edge is flush across the hinge, and then verify that a 0.2mm feeler gauge can fit easily in the hinge gaps. Tighten the screws, and then once again check the alignment and gaps. 
Connect the display cables and then position the cable tensioners into place, ensuring that the cables route over the plastic guides along the edge of the motherboard. Do not push the display cables in with anything other than the cable tensioners. This is critical to avoid damaging the cable wraps. And then install four new screws to secure the cable tensioners. Reinsert the audio jack into the C-cover and secure it with two new screws. Connect its cable to the motherboard and lock it into place. Insert the surfling port into the C-cover and reinstall two new screws to secure it. Connect the Surflinks connector to the motherboard. Place the FPC retainer over the Surflinks FPC and secure it with two new screws. Reinstall the left I.O. bracket and secure it with three new screws. After checking the debucket for any loose objects, align it with the motherboard with the battery facing up. Verify that the debucket spacer is installed on the C-cover screw boss next to the left display cables. If it's missing, replace it. Connect the battery and lock it into place. If you're working with the 2030 RSSD model, place the RSSD into the bracket and then secure it with a new screw. Reinstall the RSSD and secure it using new screws. Before closing the debucket, perform these pre-closing safety checks. Check and remove any foreign objects that the magnets may have attracted. Pay special attention to the magnetized area around the bottom of the trackpad. Verify all removed screws are accounted for and have not been misplaced in the device. Loose screws should never be stored on the magnetic areas of the C-cover. Lift the debucket from the outside edge and hinge it over the device to close it. Power on your device and run SDT to ensure all device features and functions operate as expected. Reinstall the nine screws securing the debucket. Clean off any remaining adhesive residue and then re-adhere a new cosmetic plate, making sure to check all edges with a 0.4mm feeler gauge. Remove the adhesive liners from a new non-skid foot and then loosely place the foot alignment post into the circular hole on the D-bucket. Place the other foot alignment post loosely in the oblong hole in the D-bucket. Ensure that the foot is properly aligned and place a non-metallic ruler over the foot and press it down with several fingers. Repeat this process for the second foot, 